Y'all know that feeling, man, when you're like super tired and don't want to do nothing. But that's kind of me right now. Um, I had PT today, like just a couple minutes ago before I came here. But now we at the gym, man. We're going to get this working. Got shoulders and triceps, man. You got to get lit regardless if you're tired or not, man. We get into the grind. Come on. We are here at the gym, man. How y'all doing today? Y'all see I got me an energy drink, really a performance enhancement drink. I think it's called pre-workout, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, boy, you know, I usually don't ever drink these. I'm usually always hyped up, motivated, energized. But today I was like, why not? You can tell I'm new to this. Uh, let's see how I hit. Let's see how I hit. Ugh, I don't think it hit very well. Oh, no, I did. Okay, what's that? 300 milligrams of caffeine. That's a whole bunch. It's more than all the sweet tea I drink. Oop. That like kid behind me, he's cool. He watches the videos. Hey, shout out if you watch it. Hope you're doing good today. You know what I'm saying? All right, just getting ready for the lift, man. They be over here chugging this drink down. Today, we got shoulders today. So we're doing shoulder press right now. Um, got to put on, but I think the first set is a 45 and two tens. So if you know math, that's 175. Uh, so we start the first set with uh, 175. We're going to go in for 12 reps. So we're doing four sets of 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, then six reps. We're gonna start at 175, work our way up. Uh, probably hit 185, go to probably around 200 and try 205 and see how that go today. Just fixing the camera real quick to see how this hit. Let's see how this hit.
Guys, I'll be 100% with y'all. Right now, I feel so weird. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, uh, This is like my sixth, seventh recording. And each one, it seems just to get harder. Um, And because it's a vlog, I think this is perfect to speak to y'all about. Because I feel as if it's like something's holding me back from speaking this message. Am I saying it's the devil? Am I saying it's God? I'm just saying that it's almost like I'm going through some type of fight right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling great mentally. I've been happy. That's not the question. It's just like I don't know how to get loose from whatever it is holding me from speaking this message. But in the midst of it, every time it gets difficult, I consistently take this to God. I just keep praying and praying. And I believe wholeheartedly that he will lose me from whatever this is, that I may spread this message. But because I feel like this right now, I think it's amazing that we speak about this because I think that it's important that we all understand that sometimes you're just not going to feel right. Sometimes you're going to go through things that make you doubt your faith. You're going to deal with the world that is constantly surrounding you with reasons, quote unquote reasons, not real reasons, just their own reasons to not believe in God. Some people don't believe in God because, you know, they know he's real. But if he's real, you know, they have to submit themselves to him. They have to walk in in his ways and abide by his rules. And that's just not how people want to live. You know, they'd rather be sinful and, and have their sex and have their money and have all these things, you know. And that's the first step of, of, of having faith is being willing to give that up and, and make God Lord of your life. But they'd rather not believe. And, and as a Christian living life and looking around and seeing people live like that can be so difficult because you're like, dang, am I missing out? Then you have the friends that around you or just the people around you and the world itself around you that's constantly pushing their wickedness in your faith, in your face. You have the constant videos or the constant reminders or the constant people in school teaching you things that will make it seem like there were other the ways outside of God are right. But there is no way outside of Jesus Christ that is right. For John 14, 6 lets us know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So there is no other way. There is no other truth. And at the end of the day, if it is not in Jesus Christ, then there is no life. But sometimes the life that we live here in this temporary can be blinding. Our situations can be blinding and distract us from the truth. Right now, I feel as if making these videos, um, not all of these, I'm just talking about this one right here, just, just trying to get this message, has almost been blinding. Almost as if it's like something was trying to attack me and make me doubt whether I was called or worthy, whether I was called to, to make this message. But you know what? I'm going to sit up and tell you right now. It's not about how you feel. It's not about what the world is telling you. Because I'm telling you here in Isaiah, the 37th chapter, a serious spokesman is coming and telling them that their God isn't going to save them. He's telling them that Israel is already doomed from the start. Before the fight has even begun, they've already lost. He's telling them like all the other nations, all the other godless nations or the nations who claim other gods, that they will fall. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you truly lean on God and his instruction, allow him to work through you in your life, then you will not fall. It's like the three Israelite boys who were placed by King Nebuchadnezzar into the fiery furnace. I would say all their names, but I'm scared I'm going to mess one up. But they were placed in there and they were burning. They were in that fire and they were burning. And I'm sure all those, Assyri um, those people thought they were um, burning. They were gone. All those Assyrians thought it was over, that the job was done. But then King Nebuchadnezzar looked in there and saw four men when he knew he only threw three. And you know what's beautiful about that is let us know. Again, King Nebuchadnezzar says that the one looked like the son of God. Now, you know, of course, in this time, this is pre-Jesus. So, you know, it could be talking about Jesus. It could be talking about an angel as they reference angels to be the son of God multiple times in the Bible and the Old Testament. But it doesn't matter which one it is because what it lets us know is that in the midst of the situation, they still had the presence of God with them. And that's something we must realize. Even in the midst of the pressures of the world, even in the midst of our situations, whether we're burning, drowning, whatever we're going through, God is with us. And if we are dependent on him and take our burdens to him, we will succeed and overcome. Verse 14 here in Isaiah 37 chapter. 
This is about after Hezekiah receives a message from the king of Assyria. Basically, like I just said, outlining the destruction that is coming towards them. Because this king of Assyria is being a prideful man and declaring that victory is already his before they've even fought. He's clowning them, blaspheming the name of their God. And, you know, when, when the world is constantly blaspheming God and making it seem like it's not real, it's easy to say, well, what if he's not? It, it would be easy for Hezekiah right now to sit there and cry and say, oh, my wife, my children, my friends, my family, we're all doomed. But instead, he responds in a way that we all should in our life. Hezekiah in verse 14, it says, Hezekiah took the letter from the messenger's hands. I want you to realize that he receives the message. He it says, read it. Which means now he's heard the message. He's taken it in. And directly it says, <clears throat> Then went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. So after receiving this message, after reading what was in it. So now not only did he receive a message, he knows exactly what it says. And after doing this, he didn't act. He didn't retaliate. He didn't begin to write the message back. It says, he went to the Lord's temple, which means he went before God. And he spread it out before the Lord. Which tells us that Hezekiah saw his situation face to face. He knew what he was facing. And before he got scared, before he began to worry, before he tried to take things into his own hand, he spread it before God. Which means he gave his burden to the Lord. Here in verse 15, it says, Then Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. Now, in his prayer, Hezekiah asked for guidance, asked for help, and he asked the Lord for deliverance. But before all, in verse 16, right directly after this, Hezekiah begins with glorifying God. And what that means is that Hezekiah recognized, even in the midst of his situation, that God was greater. And so he took his situation and placed it before him. He took his situation and said, God, I know that it looks bad. Trust me, uh, I want to be scared. But at the end of the day, I know that my God is greater. And even though I know how I feel, I know that you got me. And for us today, the greatest test that we're going to face is are we willing to, to remember who God is even in the midst of what the world is telling us? Are we willing to remember who God is even in the midst of how we're feeling today? I'm telling you, before this video right here, I was, I was feeling off, y'all. I was feeling weird. I'm saying I was getting frustrated. But right now, there's a little peace in me, a little bit of joy. Romans 15, 33 says, now, now let the God of peace be with you all. I believe that the God of peace is with me right now, and I know that he's with you if you will accept him and allow him to dwell within you. And so my greatest message I can give you all today is to hold to your faith in the midst of the fire. <laughs> oh, I like that. Hold to your faith in the midst of the fire because there's going to be a whole lot of things going on in life. Peace to the world is the absence of the situation. But like the three Israelite boys, the, the, the true peace is the presence of God in it. So I want us all to recognize his presence and to accept his peace and to choose to abide in him and place our situations before him like Hezekiah, spreading it out before the Lord and coming to him in prayer, trusting in him to do his work and, his, and give us guidance. Let us pray. Dear Father, I pray, Lord God, for a release, Lord God, of our situations, our struggles in our life. I ask you, Lord God, just to give us, Lord God, what we need to overcome. We place our burdens before you, Lord God. All the things, Lord God, that are distracting us, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, for our closeness to you, that we may see you, Lord God, in our lives personally, in all situations. We place before you every worry, every doubt, whatever it is, Lord God. We give it to you, Lord God, in faith, asking you just to be our deliverance, our salvation, and our peace. For God, you are a great almighty God, whose works strength are beyond understanding and we glorify you for it god so it's in jesus name we pray in jesus name we all pray amen well y'all no i'm happy man hey y'all enjoyed that vlog man make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe man we got a good guy y'all i'm hype again man we got a good guy and i don't care what the world says i'm gonna stay hype for him i'm gonna stay hype for him and i want you to stay hype too man hey pray you enjoy the vibe man no limit Say that it's